So low leveling episode two cut content from any news. Let's see what he has to say. You've heard it before and I'll say it again, but this is what the first episode should have ended on. Mm -hmm. A prologue as captivating as it was entertaining. Despite knowing exactly what was going to happen, I still found myself entranced by the grim situation Sung Jinu found himself in. It was the part of solo leveling that, to me, differentiated this from every other power fantasy. The initial like, hook? The tame substance of last episode definitely could have been perceived as basic, but it was here in episode 2 that we finally got to see what solo leveling really has to offer. We've still. Absolute gore, brute. Well, I wonder if they're going to continue delivering on the brutality, because, like, the first couple episodes, well, the first two episodes, which I think is, like, roughly, like, 10 chapters of the webtoon, right? That initial hook. There's a lot of gory, bloody sh scenes. Like, even people are saying that they love how they actually didn't censor anything. They actually showed all the different, you know, actual injuries. They're not just, like, blacking out the, the arms that were cut off or the blood, right? So that was, that was nice. I, I did enjoy that. ...of last episode definitely could have been perceived as basic, but it was here in episode 2 that we finally got to see what solo leveling really has to offer. We still that. just barely scratched the surface, but... Now, these are more images that's out of context that I keep seeing, which I'm sure kind of is spoilers, but without context, it's, it's not really. If episode 2 had been combined with episode 1, an opening like that honestly would have felt just as impactful as Attack on Titans or Death Notes. I think... Was Death Note's opening episode that good when it first aired? Interesting, but I agree. Again, they already did like a VIP premiere where episode 2 and 1 were combined in one, right? And people saw it in like a specific theater or some shit. I forget, but I wonder why they decided to separate the two episodes, huh? Because I feel like it could have done way better if they delivered on both. I think it would have captured the attention of a lot more people right from the get-go. Yeah. The setup to Doom, then tease of what's to come, really was portrayed better than I could have imagined. In fact, a lot of the scenes were a lot more gruesome than how even the manhwa portrayed it. <laughs> that girl I thought was Juhi, dude, straight up. In fact, a lot of the scenes... I was so captivated by everybody dying. I thought that this is Juhi for a second. This were a lot more gruesome than how even the manhwa portrayed it. <laughs> oh lord. And that's just one of the many differences between the manhwa and anime. <laughs> the very thing we're going to talk about in this video here. Not only is it a comprehensive review of how the anime was compared to the manhwa though, but it's also a breakdown oh, of it's the Mr. more Fast guy. details left out from the novel. Now, I know many of you have probably read the solo leveling manhwa, but if you're looking to no. read the original novel for yourself, then the best place to find it is over at Web Novel. Oh, I feel a fucking uh, hashtag ad coming in, aren't don't you feel a hashtag ad coming, guys? As the host of both the webcomic and the novel, Web Novel was kind enough That's to That's right! This video. Use your discount code hashtag any news. Use it on Web Novel to get your free early access. Anime. And back to the regular Episode content. Episode 2. If I had one more chance. Covering chapters 4 to 10 of the webcomic and chapters 4 to 7 of the web novel. This first little bit actually relates to the previous episode, but one of the biggest differences between the manhwa and anime here is the addition of this dagger for Sung Jinu during his raids. Oh, it wasn't what about something it? that he actually had available to him. Now, that may not seem like that big of a deal at first, but when you realize the implication is that Sung had done every raid with no weapon at all, it really makes you un. Oh, he just been bear fighting the entire time. He just been fucking slapping the shit out of goblins with bare hands. But I guess that's why he gets injured all the time. Understand just how courageous he's been. I mean, it's one thing to confront a literal demon when you can use a sword, but to do so with nothing but the hands that you were born with, well, that's a whole nother feat that requires more than just bravery. And yeah, he doesn't even have like strength, right? Because he's like E rank or some shit. So his like strength and like fortitude is probably already weak. So damn, I didn't realize he had to fucking bare hand all this shit. It was all because Sung was committed to saving as much money as possible. He never invested any into buying a weapon because to him he felt it would just end up breaking anyway. Oh, I just thought that it was all going towards medical bills. So, as long as the only thing to break was always his body, Sung knew he could just get healed and keep going hunting again. So he's fucking just using Juhi like that, huh? Well, he's not using her, but he's like, ah, fuck it, I'll just get, I'll just tank it, I'll just, I'll just get, I'll just get healed up by Juhi, and I'll just keep farming. It was a mindset that not only highlighted his commitment <laughs> to saving money, but at the same time also showed just how much risk he was putting on himself. Keep in mind, Sung definitely isn't a professional fighter, so to find out that he was straight throwing hands with every monster yeah, he was up against, just well, barehanded? that makes his feats a lot more impressive no matter how weak he is. He was quite literally boxing for every essence crystal that he came across. This didn't really work in his favor with the other hunters though, since to them not only did this highlight Sung's weakness as a hunter, but the injuries he sustained while doing so also doubled the workload of their healer. 
Yeah, and also, I thought only the healers, like, most of the raids that we went on, or at least this one, right, it's like, you didn't even need a healer, like, you could just fucking just do it without one, but only Sung needed one, so only, the healer only exists to fucking heal Sung, but look at this shit, dude. Look, look at this shit fucking goblin, dude. <laughs> he was very quickly viewed more as a nuisance than an asset, a low-rank tagalong that eventually became known as the weakest. Another subtle difference between the manhwa and the anime was the condescending look the statue quite visibly had over everyone. Oh? In the anime, it was more this neutral, I'm just a statue like type a stoic face, look. whereas every panel from the manhwa made it seem like the statue was looking down on them. So they had a little bit more sass, you know? The statue in the, the webtoon was like really sassy, okay? There was this clear disdain in its gaze here that I feel hmm. the anime didn't really capture in the beginning. The later smile was a whole different emotion. I feel it animated perfectly, but yeah, it was the pretty good, right? Leading up to that could have been a bit more intimidating. Now, it was after the laser beam was fired that, of the sixteen hunters alive, only eleven were remaining. After, had Sung reacted one one hundredth of a second later, then he too would have been on that list. Wait, wait, wait! What? Do, what do you mean one one hundredth of a second though? Like, where are you getting this quantifiable unit of measurement from? Cause like. Are you actually telling me that this is from like the the webtoon or the actual source material in the in the the web novel, or is any news just pulling out numbers from his ass? Sometimes he says this shit, and I'm like, hmm, like someone like him, he must have done his due diligence in the research, right? So okay, one one hundred seconds that that was the frame difference. The casualties. It was in the novels that he was about to get back up right after, but just before he could, that's when Mr. Song prevented him. By using the one good arm he had left, he had forced Sung back down and ordered the rest to do the same. Now, I know oh. that's an order we s Interesting. In the anime, it's more like... It, Sung Jin Moo basically got up. Mr. Sung was like, wait, what are you doing? And then Sung Jin Moo had like a really cool look in his eye, right? It was like a main character moment. And Mr. Sung was like, oh, I see you haven't given up yet, right? So you're going to start, start uh, try to survive still. And that's when he looked up, then looked down, then he tells everybody, hey, you need to bow down. That's what revered God means. But Webtoon, bit different. Saw him given the anime, but by having that additional part where he helps out Sung as well, it really goes to highlight just how much of a veteran he is. Despite losing his arm only a mere few seconds. I didn't even see that he lost his arm in this frame because I thought it was just like a cut. I thought it was like a random injury because the how the... His like arm, you know, the clothes, it blends into the torso, but then the other frame, I'm like, oh shit, he's like wrapping up his fucking stump. He's armless. Ago, he had quickly composed himself and started looking out for others. He neither descended into panic nor focused solely on himself, but instead continued to lead and focused on everyone else's survival. It All was right, the true good leader. Someone who's been a hunter for over 10 years now. To continue speaking. That's crazy, only 10 years? I guess the gate only opened 10 years ago or something, because he's like 60-something years old, right? Speaking to that experience, the reason he knew this dungeon was A rank or S rank was because out of all the B rank dungeons he'd done throughout his career, not a single monster had ever been capable of one-shotting someone. <laughs> it was a phenomenon he knew could only happen in the highest- <laughs> Well, that's a bunch of fucking D ranks, right? Or C rank hunters anyways. One of the funniest shit here was this guy saying, I'm so confident in my speed. And like- I'm not sure if the statue is trying to be funny or some shit, but he just kills. He, he just wipes out just to... He just leaves behind the fucking legs, you know? Not the legs, the fucking... I don't even know what to call this, right? There's the foot, the ankles, a little bit of the calves. I think it's hilarious because this dude was like, I'm so confident in my speed. Fucking runs. And the statue's like, no, you're not. <laughs> fucking blows him up. Just leaves his shoes there for extra disrespect. <laughs> Sung Jin should loot this. It was a phenomenon he knew could only happen in the highest ranked dungeons. Since he believed this one to be super easy though, one of the things he mentioned only in the manhwa was that he had thought three healers would be more than adequate for this. Nah. With one having just been vaporized though, another cowering far away- Oh, okay, I thought he was saying another healer was vaporized. No, it's just one person. This guy, I think, is the person that said I want to- uh, I have a family, you know, I need to also like, um... He, he's the one that betrays Sung Jin Mu while crying and saying I have a family. And then Sung Jin was like, I have a family too, goddammit! The then their best Ju He incapable of doing anything anymore. It basically meant anyone who was injured like him was out of luck now. I don't think this was the fault of Songs for not expecting this, but perhaps at least one more experienced healer may have proved valuable here. At the Maybe, very yeah. least, one who wouldn't crack under the pressure like this. Not gonna lie, Ju He. 
All right, PTSD trauma, stuff like that. Sure, sure, I understand, but I'm not gonna lie. Juhi being like this was a huge fucking baggage, in my opinion. There was a bit more freaking out for those who remained after this than the runner Ju was revealed to be what's called a. This just name is Jesus subtitles. All right. Most combat hunter. These were the types of hunters who possessed far superior physical abilities to. Close combat hunters, implying like you're just like a melee fighter. All right, far superior physical abilities. Remember, he's very confident in his speed, guys. Regular humans, and as such, would always be the ones to jump right into combat. Oh, this guy Some too, Genu close combat. As well, but unfortunately for him, he wasn't as blessed as all the other close combat hunters. Now, a subtle change specific to the novels after this was another beam attack that happened right after Sung stood up for the second time. Oh? We know this was him testing to see what would happen, but it was the fact it attacked again but only above a certain height that allowed him to reasonably deduce that staying low was the solution here. Oh, because in the anime, his eyes just lit up, then we look down, but I guess here there's an actual <laughs> threshold, like a certain height that actually shoots a laser and nothing below. He was even able to determine that while low, they could move as much as they wanted. The anime and manhwa only showed the statue's eyes start to glow, but I think that by having the statue fully attack again, it makes Sung Jinu's jumps in logic make a bit more sense. When Damn, that guy really just got evaporated to fucking nothing. Again, Look at this. It makes Sung Jinu's I always see this part right logic. over here. This dude? Oh, the rib cage, the f oh, the bones, dude. That is raw, dude. <laughs> What I mean is that he was able to visibly see that the laser would only kill him if he was standing above a certain height, thus reinforcing the notion that his previous assumption was true. He's crawling this the ground. This the path towards a slightly bigger change because it's here that Mr. Kim starts to be depicted rather differently. Oh? He wasn't nearly as passive as he was in the anime or manhwa, but was instead becoming increasingly aggressive the more dangerous things became. Yeah, he did do that. He fucking just pulled the sword out to Mr. Song and was like, take some fucking accountability. And honestly... Kind of true, because Mr. Song is the one that would really want to go in. At least in the webtoon, right? In the webtoon, it was like, he was making a bunch of guilt trip bullshit of like, oh, I need to fucking, uh, what's the word? If you don't go, I'm going to go in by myself or something, right? So it's like, what, 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 what do you mean? You can't just be doing shit like that. So when Sung had suggested that everyone should bow, it was Mr. Kim who was the first to deny him. Sure, many of the other hunters started cursing him as well, but it was Mr. Kim who was without a doubt the most vocal about it. He had even gone so far as to say that if he could stand, he would go and punch Sung just for suggesting Damn. that. Damn! This was definitely a response fueled by rage, but for them who'd just lost six comrades to the statue, it was absurd to think that they could just disregard that and go and bow to it. Combine that with the fact Sung had no proof to what was essentially a guess, and the result was a group of people just not willing to cooperate. I mean, he was after all the weakest person there, and it was until just recently that most, if not all of them, were looking down on him for that. It was only after Song had mentioned that he would do it that the rest would follow suit, albeit reluctantly. To okay. them, the notion of possibly surviving was far more enticing than whatever prideful resentment kept them from doing so. So, initially nothing had happened the first time around, but that was because everyone except for Juhi was bowing. As you would I mean, she's already bowing, right? Well, she's not. The whole, it's not really about bowing. I feel like it's just like getting down and putting your eye down and not being above a certain height. But, you know, they still pass with Ju you fucking sobbing on the ground like this. She was stuck in fetal position and couldn't move regardless of what she wanted. She had forced Sung to have to reposition her himself. Oh, wait. An act which would finally... So, so in the webtoon... Okay, so in the webtoon... <laughs> So she actually did have to change her position, but in the anime, I, I swear to God, she just in the same fetal position the entire time, and we just went to the next phase. An act which would finally bring them into the second phase. Okay, okay, that's different. A minor thing to note about the religious guy was that... <laughs> oh, I studied the G... I, I know my Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it's like the wrong God, you idiot. It says revere God. What is the God in this context? The fucking statue. So why would you think praise God implies that you're going to pray to fucking your own Lord, Jesus Christ and fucking his father? Like, no, it's going to be the statue. What are you doing? He wasn't the academic the anime made him out to be, but instead just a random guy who sung in his local church choir. <laughs> Yo, these are the actual webtoon art. I used to be in a church choir. I'm confident in singing hymns, which actually kind of like hints a little bit more. Because in the anime, we're just talking about praising, praying or something, right? 
I, I, I could not guess like this is going to be about activating the instrument statues to play a song for the statue. But in the webtoon, it actually kind of implies that, hey, there's a little bit of a singing component to this, which is kind of cool. Since that meant praise was something he was familiar with, he believed one of his church hymns might be the answer, resulting in him literally singing to the giant statue walking towards him. <laughs> Bro was just singing. <laughs> in the anime, he was just like singing some, um... I don't know, it's like, Heavenly Father and Lord, dear Lord, the fucking have mercy, please, blah, 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 stuff like that. But in the webtoon, bro was just straight up singing a church choir song. The statue had actually come to a full stop right before him. Oh. So as a sign that this might actually be working, the man had started singing both louder and more confidently. He had fully embraced the idea that this could very well be the answer. Okay. Of course, Sung knew that. You know, I'm, I'm being too mean to him. He's already fucking risking his life. He's already, like, saying, like, damn, I could die right now. But he's still doing it. I'm being way too mean to him. I just feel like it's fucking hilarious. It's like, bro, who are you praying to? Something was off because if the role was to praise the god standing before them, then yeah. it wouldn't make sense that him's praising a Christian god would Exactly! Be it was obvious the only outcome was the one where this person got stepped on. Sung did try to turn and help the next girl, but it was before he could even oh, get close that Song he look alike. in front of him to stop him. You see, to Song, it was way too late to do anything for her. The statue was clearly on a mission to bye kill bye. everyone, and its increasing speed only went to make such a point even more obvious. I'm not just talking about a stroll into a moderately paced walk, but instead a walk into a full-on sprint. That's right, in the novel the statue was described to be running to everyone. Bro it was running? much as if the colossal titan was straight up dashing towards That's them. fucking terrifying. Obviously, animating something like that would be rather difficult, but I think just imagining it, also it looks funny. across too. Now, a couple other subtle things to mention about the manhwa is the incredibly expressive bases of despair each of the characters were portrayed. Oh my god! The, the anime did a pretty good job, but the webtoon... Yo, the webtoon's art is just... Well, this is why people are always going to be saying the webtoon is better. And honestly, if we're just comparing the art... Yeah, I agree. You know, there's a funny thing, right? There's like the meme of the One Punch Man manga is better animated than the One Punch Man anime itself, or at least for season two. That's the same case for here, right? The art is just too goddamn good. The anime can do a decent enough job, but it's definitely not going to reach the peak and the, you know, like, like everything that people are expecting from this show is, I think, because of the fascinating art, right? The art is just so goddamn good. And there's some like iconic scenes, I'm sure, just like the smiling, you know, statue that's going to be compared to against the anime because the anime, it just can't do the same, man. We got the limitations. This was definitely a natural product of single panel versus fluid animation. But Damn, look at Mr. Kim, man. All cuts and changes here. I figure showing a few would. Well, look at this. Look at the absolute terror in her eyes. Like the, the art is unreal. And again. Salute to the author, sorry, the illustrator of Solo Leveling who passed away and can't see his work shown in the big screens. Like such a difference. The anime still <laughs> Aqua made it in. This is when we do pause, right? We pause the game and then we unpause. Hello, Aqua. Definitely captured everyone's dread and despair perfectly, but to not show the Manwa's detail would be remiss on my part. There were also a few extra panels showing a lot Ooh. of the other hunters dying. Then Park's flashback was preceded by the fact that... <laughs> Why not quit that dangerous job and get a normal one instead? We have two kids now. Nah. Gotta make as money, much money as I can. Well, here's the fucking fun fact, dumbass. If you're dead, then there's definitely no money coming in. You know, it's probably mean for me to be so fucking brutal to a family man who's trying to support his family, but... Something about him raising the fucking death flags about before we ran into the dungeon and while within the dungeon over and over again. It's just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. You really want to die, don't you? He wanted to live the most. It was a belief brought to life by the additional energy he channeled to make himself run faster. Fortunately, this brought him the farthest. <laughs> he fucking ran right into the sword statue, bro. I mean, we didn't know about there's instruments or not, right? He didn't know shit, but he gets fucking split in half right now. ...away from the giant statue first, but unfortunately for him, this also made him the target of the other ones. Yeah. So it was part... Yo, the webtoon only showed this. The anime? 
fucking split his face. One side fell to the fucking side. Then blood started fucking pooling around his eyeballs in slow motion. The anime did this guy so dirty. Death and the I the love it. She was right on his ass that Mr. Kim would break down the moment he arrived at safety. Damn. They didn't show him get chased in the anime, but in the novels, the statue was only one or two. Wait, 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 wait. In the novels, the Is that Family Man with this green poofy jacket right here? No, he got split in half. That's, this is a different guy with the poofy jacket. The statue was only one or two steps away from reaching him. He was without a doubt the next target chosen for elimination by it. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you just how stressful such a situation could be, but I'm also sure the relief of seeing the statue stop right in front of you would be equally as satisfying. This was the plethora of emotions Mr. Kim was going through. The statue would then shift its focus to the only two people left, and this would lead to Sung running blindly as fast as he could to get away from it. And this, I think, is the beginning of the best moment in episode 2. When all the instruments start to slowly light up, and they all start actually playing their instrument sounds. And the sounds are actually part of the soundtrack by Hiroki Sano. And the absolute desperation from Sun Jing Wu as he starts running to a statue. The statue fucking steps on him. He fucking gets out of the way, rolls into a different statue. Someone else is like, no, it's not over there. The shield fucking comes slamming down. and He still crawls without a foot. You know, I think that is one of the best parts of the anime. The reason he ended up at the shield statue was because he was so focused on the giant statue that was chasing him, as well as the amount of energy he was channeling into his legs in order to run faster that he didn't even realize he was going in the wrong direction. Boom. Had he been paying attention to his surroundings too, then he would have noticed that there wasn't a single instrument statue left at all. This was the last thing on his mind though as oh. the recent attack from the sh Wait! The shield missed? Or wait, no, no, no. It's, it's about to hit. The, the art here, it looked like it already hit the ground, but I think it's about on contact to get his like right foot cut off. Field left him teetering on the edge of life and death. It was a game he knew he was always playing, but it was this particular moment that he felt he would finally lose. This was neither mentioned in the novels nor the anime, but oh. in the manhwa it was visualized through a spectral game of tug of war. What? Here we have Sung holding on to the threat life of life, or it's death. in this moment that it looks as if it's about to snap. So, as Sung called out to whatever- I'm sure it's just like what he's envisioning in his mind, is that's not supposed to be some kind of actual plot stuff, right? God would listen, he would make it to the singing statue and end the second phase. This wasn't before getting stared down intensely by the statue, though, since in the novels, the giant god was very clearly angered by this. Well, it he was seemed pissed perturbed off. perturbed by Sung's persistent will to live, and as... Bro didn't want to get praised, so as soon as he started praising him, he's like, God fucking damn it, these kids are too good at reading this. Such expressed its discontent with a face significantly scarier than any it had before. Whatever disdain it exhibited before was now greatly magnified by the fact that Sung got to live here. It was a feeling made apparent by the intimidating stare it held for what seemed like forever. That brings us now to Juhi's futile attempt to heal <laughs> Sung, which for the most part consisted of every bit of healing magic she had available to her. And then she starts bleeding out her eyes. She was trying every spell she could possibly think of, despite knowing full well that only the higher ranked healers could regenerate limbs like that. Oh, so regenerating limbs is possible, but only for like S rank. So in actuality, all she was doing was pouring out mana, much to the point that it was taking a toll on her vitality now. This was portrayed mainly as bleeding and fatigue, but the way mana exhaustion was described in the novels was significantly worse than how they made it seem here. Wait, so her leg not being able to move was not purely just like PTSD and like the trauma that she was experiencing. It was because she exerted her mana right there. Which makes me even... <laughs> No, I, I gotta stop hating on this character. She's doing all she can. She's doing great. It's just that it, she basically just wasted all the mana here. She just wasted all this shit. Just, just, it's not gonna heal back. You know you can't grow back a fucking limb. And now because she's exerted her mana, she can't fucking move. Okay, this is, that's fucked up. Novels was significantly worse than how they made it seem here. You see, not only was she unable to move in the moment Sung needed her most, but her lack of vitality became increasingly apparent through the bluing of her lips and the occasional body spasms. They were all side effects that came when someone overused their mana to Damn. Their emptiness. Symptoms that only worsened with her extreme exhaustion. So this girl is going through it, man. Is going through it, but I think it is worth noting just how much she really was going through it. It leads us into another character who wasn't quite depicted the way they were in the novels. Who? That of course being Mr. Kim. Kim again. 
I'd mentioned how with every phase he was becoming more and more aggressive. Well, it was here in the third that that aggression had come to its forefront. He had right? taken he fucking boom puts the sword. You, Mr. Song, you're the one at fault here. Take some accountability. Like how he did in the anime, except the reason for it was because he knew no one could stop him. Since Song was incapacitated without his arm, that made Kim the strongest since he was up there at the top of the D ranks. Damn. It had left him feeling like he could force Song to be the sacrifice everyone thought. Dude, was. look at this art style. Makes me want to read the fucking webtoon more and more. Look at this. Needed. I mean, he was, after all, the one that guilt-tripped them into opening the doors with him. Kim didn't trust that Song would actually follow through with it, though, so as he walked slowly towards the altar in the center, Kim followed close behind, holding with his the sword, sword to his there? Back just in case. Jesus, it was an Mr. Act Kim. Song believed to be the very height of cowardice, one that would have him curse his powerlessness, more so now than any time he'd ever felt weak before this. Ha, huh, so even now he was kind of like hating on Mr. Kim. Because at the end where Mr. Kim basically leaves saying, I have a family too, and he cries and leaves, right? Mr. Song, uh, uh, Sung Jin-woo is kind of pissed off and saying, yo, I have a fucking family too. What about me, huh? So all, like, the, <laughs> the antagonization of Mr. Kim, huh? He's kind of, he's not the main villain here. Not at all. Everyone's trying to survive, but he keeps doing these things that makes, like, Sung Jin-woo kind of hate him more and more. I, I really wonder what's going to happen when we make it out of here, right? Because these people actually survived. Are we going to meet them outside? Does it even matter? Are we going to... I don't think a revenge plot is necessary. It, it makes no sense. But I would just like to at least get a little closure. Like, go outside, meet them, see what they have to say. Oh, you survived too? Have a little awkward silence? Go other ways? With this being the epitome of injustice, Sung knew that if he had the power to get up and stop Kim himself, then that's exactly what he would have done five mm. times over by now. In fact... It was only two key things that were preventing him from getting up and trying it anyway. The first was the fact his that leg? his rank lower and missing a leg. Yeah, he doesn't other have was a leg. The rational nature of Kim, which could very possibly put Juhi in danger. You see, there was a chance that if Sung was to get up and try anything, both him and Juhi could become Kim's targets next. Yo, Mr. Kim was a menace! Kim getting hostile towards him, but putting Juhi in danger wasn't something he was willing to risk right now. What the fuck? All this shit was going on in their heads? Mr. Dude, Mr. Kim is a fucking menace. All he did in the anime was just fucking sob and cry. Like, you straight up, all he did was fucking cry. That's the reason now more than ever he hated how weak he was. Oh. Luckily, Sung didn't have to stay upset for long since as soon as he saw a sacrifice may not even be necessary, his face lit up as he knew he could potentially save Song now. He didn't have very long to think about it though, since with Juhi's condition getting worse, Kim's anger steadily spiraling out of control, then the other hunters quickly losing their senses to fear, it was clear not many more rational decisions were going to be made by everyone. So, Sung acted quickly to get everyone near the altar, and that's when 36 blue lights lit up around them. 36? Which represented one minute of a 36-minute timer, and all signified- Why is it a 36-minute timer? Why not just fucking 30? Why, 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 why do that, the bro? The start of this final test of faith. <laughs> to provide a bit more clarity on how this was a test of faith, the whole thing essentially came down to the false hope you could see versus the promise they couldn't. The false hope being the wide open door in front mm. of them, and the promise being the ensured path of survival should they prove their faith successfully. But no one knows that, and Mr. Kim actually brings up a very good point. At the end, it's like, yo, how can you guarantee that if we actually stay here, staring at the statues, and the blue flames go out, can you guarantee that that door won't close, right? No one fucking knows. We're just making educated guesses and assumptions based on what we're seeing so far. He does have a valid point, and I don't think anyone in their fucking right mind would not run for the door. Like, I don't blame anyone running out the door. I, that's the most reasonable, logical decision that a person trying to survive would make. It was a conclusion Sung had come to after taking in how the statue's lights and door reacted to them. This, combined with the fact the commandments always provided a way out, made him certain his path forward was the only one. So, when the first person left and the door closed a little bit... The, the Gyaru, right? The gal with the white lipstick. She fucking Sung dipped. Knew for sure that the door was a trap. Honestly, she had probably big, the biggest balls. Because, like, I would not have been the first one to run out. No fucking shot. Because we saw what happened to people that ran out before, right? So, she had the balls to actually run out first and clutched. Mad respect, right? I'm the second person out. Not the first person. No, no, no. I would never be the guinea pig myself. 
But as soon as I saw that girl leave and the door closed a little, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of confident in my speed too. I'm fucking dashing. Had they all left the zone when the door had opened, then the door would have closed fully and all of them been trapped forever. It was clear proof that staying put was the only right answer. Now, the thing is, with the statues moving closer and the blue flame still showing 30 minutes left, that was a long time spent trusting that Sung Jin Woo's assumption was accurate. Again, Not it's all assumptions. They had to trust that he was right though, but they also had to trust that the people around them could do their jobs too. Assuming they were set free after those 30 seconds. People around them could do their jobs. How many times have you guys played a fucking MMO where there's a boss mechanic? It's like an eight-man raid. And one fucking person making a mistake just wipes the raid. You can't... I fucking hate those mechanics, man. People are monkeys. Everybody just fucks it up. Six minutes. They still had to keep their cool and maintain watch throughout all of it. So, the question for everyone then was, do I trust Sung and trust my comrades, or do I succumb to temptation and seek out freedom for myself? See, this is the beautiful thing about this, the test of faith is like, all right, you need to, everyone needs to trust each other and just stare at the statues. And based on the assumption that when the timer goes out, we will live, right? But with the temptation of the door being open like that, and you see people going out, this is such a game of psychology that I love. Something is so twisted here. The statue is just pretty much fucking toying with us, right? It's like, mm, do you want those K-pop idol powers or do you want to live? You know, the door is open. You know, it's, it's fucking crazy. It was a question to which the answer would determine whether they could prove their faith or not. Would they trust the god killing them was also one who would let them go? Or would they break their faith and look out for themselves? She, I think, um, I have a lot of respect for this girl. Right, you could say that she betrayed Sung Jin Woo or whatever, but it takes a lot of balls again to be the first one to try and leave after seeing what happened to other people that tried to leave before and got split in half. Would they trust their fellow hunters and have faith in their ability, or would they break that too and send them straight to their death? Yo, in the webtoon, he actually says, I'm sorry, I don't think I can take this anymore. In the anime, he was basically supporting Sung Jin Woo because he had one, no, he didn't have a leg. He just fucking tosses him. He straight up throws Sung Jin Woo to the side. Fuck you, I'm out. That's... The whole thing was kind of like this messed up trolley problem. One where if you pull the lever, you can save yourself. This is a Steins Gate meme that probably spoils without context, but whatever. But by doing so, you're also sending the trolley to kill another person. What are this you gonna choose? This was quite the interesting predicament, and it was very enthralling to see the way that everyone slowly but surely started leaning towards pulling the lever. Yo, I'm not, uh, let's just stop here. The art is amazing, but where the fuck did this guy's face go? Everybody's face here is so well, you know, detailed. <laughs> Bro forgot to draw this guy's face on the left. The first girl just cracked under the pressure, but it was the second guy who left shortly after that did so because he could hear the statues moving behind him. Initially, he seemed on board with what Sung Jinu was saying, but nah, the moment those out. statues started inching their way it's too closer scary, man. was the moment he lost faith in everyone else and decided to save himself. This left only four now, but among those four, two very important variables were present now. Oh? The first was Sung and the respect he'd earned by helping everyone survive, while the second was the indisputable fact that anyone could escape to safety now. This begged the question of faith versus survival again, which to Mr. Kim was something that he needed assurance on. You see, yes, Sung's theories may have been backed with multiple trials and various observable evidence, but the idea they would survive this trial now still wasn't 100% guaranteed. Again, there is no guarantee here. Everything is based on Sung Jin Woo's guess, the assumption that if we stay here after the blue flame is done, that we could perhaps live. No one knows this shit. Are you willing to fucking risk your life on an assumption? Fuck no. I am out. That's why I think that everyone leaving Sung Jin Woo here is so beautiful yet tragic because yes, it's fucked up that they betrayed him. But at the same time, if you put yourself in that position there, would you have done the same thing? I bet you would. Everybody's saying, no, I would have stayed. Cap. Cap. No, you wouldn't even have fucking made it to this third phase. You would have died in the fucking first phase. So don't fucking lie to me. So, to Kim, who wanted nothing more than to survive himself, the certainty of his own survival outweighed the possibility of survival for the entire group, leading him to run, but not before that half-hearted thanks which fueled Sung's rage. Yeah, that this rage was great. In the anime, but it was in the manhwa that Sung would look like this as Kim ran away from them. He Damn. was essentially cursing his name. 
Wow. Yo, Mr. Kim, we got to fucking see him after we leave, man. We got to see that motherfucker after we leave. I don't know. I got. I feel like I got to say something to him, man. Like, fuck. It's like in the anime, he was pretty pissed. But look at this, dude. Look at this art. For him having betrayed them. Now, the remaining three would discuss who would be left behind. And it was a surprise to find out that in the novels, Sung had actually considered Juhi. That's what? So let's do okay. The three of us left, you know, and um, only two can survive. <laughs> Juhi, I'm gonna need you to stay at this altar while me and Mr. Song just leave. Bro, he considered that in the web. No, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> I kind of like it though. I kind of like it. Not to say that he was planning to follow through on it. But oh he my didn't god. Consider it an option just like all the others. Why? Why would you have left Juhi behind? If he did somehow choose to follow through on it, though, then Sung knew he would have hated himself for the rest of his life. Okay. I mean, not only had she saved his life numerous times before, but the only reason she couldn't move now was because she had used all her mana trying to heal him again. Yeah, dumbass! You fucking wasted your mana trying to regrow his limb when you're fully aware that you're a fucking B-class fucking healer, not an S-class. That's on fucking Juhism. Yeah, I, I'm being too mean on her. She did all her... She, she did everything she could. I'm being way too mean on her. So, as Song would leave with Juhi in hand, it wouldn't be accurate to say Huh. Mr. Any News didn't talk about what was happening through Mr. Song's mind when Juhi said that I can't move anymore. I felt like that is such a pin like a critical moment in this episode where Juhi says I can't move anymore. Right? When Mr. Song just declared that, you know what, you kids, you need to live. You have more to live for me. I'm a fucking boomer. I've done everything I could. You know what? I'll be the hero right now. Then Juhi fucking collapses. Mr. Song hears her say, I can't move. And Mr. Song's face kind of shifts. For, there's like a fraction. There's a, a frame in the anime where he goes from thing like this to like... There's like a realization. Maybe it's just my headcanon. But I swear to God, there's a fucking moment where he kind of changes. And the light bulbs go off on his head. And he's like, hmm. Wait. Wait. Maybe I don't have to die. <laughs> a light of hope. <laughs> Maybe this is like self-reporting. Like maybe this is like proving that I'm fucked in the head and that I'm the only one thinking like this. And no one else was actually like thinking about what Mr. Song was thinking about, you know, Juhi saying that shit. Am I reading too deep into this? Am I projecting my own sociopathic tendencies onto these characters? Or am I the actual only one paying attention to this anime? I hope I'm actually paying attention. Sung was satisfied being the only person left, but he also wasn't upset since he knew what could have been. What I mean is that even if he did make it out missing leg and all, his new life as a cripple wasn't one he could foresee himself being happy with. Nah, you're not gonna be a cripple. Don't worry about it. K-pop surgery incoming. He wouldn't be a hunter and he wouldn't be able to get a job. So had he made it out, he wouldn't have been able to support his family the way that he wanted to. At least by dying, his mother and sister would get the $300,000 life insurance payout from the hunter. <sighs> Damn. He wasn't even thinking about life insurance. Damn, if he died, then I guess that 300k could go towards mom and you know and sister's college fee. That's fucked up. That's so fucked up. Hunter Association, a generous offer considering it was far more than what he was worth as an E-rank. The rest was Sung getting tossed around like a rag doll, which just so you know was a lot more lengthy in the anime. Really? Oh. But yeah, that's pretty much it for episode two. I decided to include a bit more details from the manhwa, so if you like that- and You're not, you're not gonna talk about the fucking- the, the courage of the weak and what a player is? What do you mean? All the stuff left out from the novels- Whoa, whoa! Let me know in the comments so I can- Any news? Like that. Hello? Hopefully this video was able to provide something new for you. I- The next video will be out around the same time next week, but if you- Alright, alright. Maybe, maybe he'll talk about it next episode, yeah. I, I, I guess that technically is like next episode content, but guys, give any news video a like, subscribe to his channel. He always gives us a good breakdown on what actually happened. There's so much more context, right? Context that I would have never understood that exists in the webtoon. The even little stuff like how Sung Jin Moo is thinking about leaving Juhi behind at the altar, which is fucked up. Mr. Kim was an absolute fucking menace in this episode too, bro. And Mr. Song, honestly, not even a villain. I know that I was shitting on him because he's the one that was kind of gaslighting us into entering this place, but... You know, Tung Jin Woo did make the tiebreaker vote. And this episode, though, 
fucking peak. I love this. The the fucking the pressure, the mental psychology, the temptation. Do you stay faithful or do you give in to the desires to live, dude? Like who even knows, right? And this is just episode two, man. Like this is just episode two of what's gonna be like a twenty-four episode like uh, season, right? Or at least we're gonna have a split core. And people are really hyping up the future content, so it really keeps me excited for what's gonna happen in the future. By the way. We will watch solo leveling Saturday on Twitch. Go follow on Kaka TV. Go, go, go.